Okay, so I thought I'd have a look at the desktopify version of Lubuntu. Lubuntu is one of my favorite versions of uh, an Ubuntu operating system. It really is a very nice looking all the way through. It looks really good. It's really nice attention to detail and it's always been fairly snappy. Well, now the desktopify version is about, which is much more uh, tuned and uh, designed for the Pi. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping for great things. So let's just log in. And you see how quick it logs in. Uh, I'm overclocked and I'll go through my settings in a minute. Uh, I overclock uh, with the different operating systems. So I basically boot up something like Raspbian or Ubuntu Mate. And then I will apply my overclock settings in that. Uh, if you want to see where the overclock settings are, uh, they are... So if I open up the file manager and go to this one and boot firmware and user config.txt so not config.txt like you do with Raspbian uh, and these are the overclock settings I'm using because I'm using my 8 gig Raspberry Pi uh, for it tends to need a slightly higher over voltage uh, and you can see these were already in there uh, and these are the ones I've added so over voltage equals 8 arm frequency 2147 and GPU at 750 uh, and it's running great uh, really really impressed with it so let's close those down uh, so you can see down the bottom here, I've made this bigger. Uh, this is certainly, it's tiny, uh, the font that it comes out as like this. I would rather make this bigger, but I haven't haven't found out how to do that yet. I'm sure it's there, uh, but I would rather it just use more of the screen. Uh, you also have the option to put these on the screen. So uh, if I do hide desktop items, so you, it comes without those. It also comes with quite a light desktop theme. The the image that it had was so user share user share XQT theme. So it's in that folder, and I think it was on I think it was on light. Was it this one? Yeah, I think that was the theme that it had, and it was a bit too light for me. I like it to be a bit darker, and I think overall this looks really nice. Uh, so down the bottom we got folders, uh, and the folders and files work really well. Things that I like about it, um, so if I go uh, network, it will show me my network drive, and I can, add, I can use that straight away, uh, and I can go in and everything works brilliantly. And you see how quick it is. So this is running through my network drive as well, and it's still running this fast, so really, really impressive. Okay, so if we look down bottom right, we've got the clock, we've got the Wi-Fi, we've got a clipboard manager, and we've got audio. The sound works fine, uh, and this is uh, a jack for all your disks that are plugged in. This is a show desktop, which is rather nice, so if I start up Firefox, uh, and also the folder manager, and then click on desktop, you can see it hides it straight away, and you've got these nice easy icons to use super super nice looking they've got multiple desktops so you can see there's two different desktops there if i click on the start bar under accessories you can see various things in here so terminal there is a calculator uh, which i thought was quite nice uh, in fact i've got a bit of mass for that so my brother discovered this when we were at school uh, so many years ago uh, if you type in lee so I'll have to I'll have to uh, reverse this. I'll have to put this upside down. Lee plus Bell equals slob. I don't know how we found it out, but uh, but it's always something I remember from school days. So if we go to uh, so you can see under education, LibreOffice, Math. Uh, there's just the single game in there. Graphics we've got. That's the photo management. LibreOffice Draw. Uh, internet we've got uh, actually this was interesting there's a BitTorrent client in there um, so the few things like uh, the Ar arcade punks images uh, are often BitTorrent and uh, I haven't got that in Raspbian I'm sure there's one you can install um, but it doesn't come as default and uh, it's nice to see that comes in there as by default uh, so there's the full lever office suite which is nice to see uh, VLC which is uh, my media player of choice really it tends to work best on most things uh, and KDE Partition Manager, I wanted to show that actually. So if I plug in, I've just copied my Android stick. Uh, I did it on a Windows computer, but I copied my Android stick uh, and made a backup image of it. The new image, I've written it to a 64 gig card, even though it was on a 32 gig card first of all. 
So let's close those bits down. Uh, so if I go into the system tools and I go into KDE Partition Manager, so it scans my devices. So this is the device that I've got Android on. So you can see this is part of the reason why uh, Android is more tricky to get on USB boot is because of the way the partitions are. Although I was looking back through some of my comments and uh, I think it was Marsan uh, had managed to make it USB boot. So I might have a look at that and getting it onto an SSD. Uh, although this is on one of my A2 faster cards uh, and it, I've noticed a difference. I've overclocked it to 2147 and it, and it is running really, really well. So if I want to expand that partition, because at the moment there's still plenty of space there, to be fair for Android, but if I want to put more things on there, put some ROMs in there and things like that, then I might as well use this available space. So if I right click on that and resize, I can then drag that bar all the way over and then click OK. And then click apply, apply pending operations. There you go, I don't know how long this is gonna take. Oh, it didn't take any time at all. All operations successfully finished. I didn't, I didn't cut anything out on that. So that was nice and simple uh, way of, uh, of expanding your partition, which is very good for like some RetroPie builds and, uh, and also in my case, when I backed up an image. So something else from here worth looking at is Discover, uh, which is a bit like an app store. Uh, and so we can do things like click on applications, we can click on games, uh, and then you can see, I quite like the, the way they've done this. Actually, I haven't done it, let's, let's try full screen. Oh yeah. So uh, lots and lots of things on there. So if we click on emulators, loads of the common emulators there, Dolphin emulator, look, which is very good. Uh, that's the um, GameCube and Wii emulator. Yeah, lots on here. Now sometimes you find uh, with these systems that you end up with x86 emulators, so they don't necessarily work on the Pi, but uh, I would usually just install it and try it and see, see if it works, but yeah. I quite like the way that's done. Simulation, sports, strategy, action. See, it's super fast as well. It's it's all populated nice and quickly. Scrolling is a bit slower on that, but that could be just down to this app because I found with the web browser, it's absolutely fine. The other package manager that's on here is Muon. Probably said differently as it's a Linux uh, program. Uh, so communication, cross-platform, databases, development, and then a check for updates option in there as well. So let's close that down and let's have a look at the web browser. So I haven't applied any more of the tweaks or anything. I've definitely found that 1080 isn't as good, but I found that 720 was very good. So if I go... Let's have a look through here and show something with a bit of movement. Oh, there's an advert, but you'll be able to hear the sound. A long day shouldn't stop you from showing up. You got this, Peloton. An early start shouldn't come So if I go full screen, actually, because the advert's fairly decent, for is it good for movement. A little bit of tearing there, but pretty good. And it feels nice and responsive as well. So, you know, sometimes you put on YouTube and it takes a while to get there and things like that. But, uh, but I found that this is working really well. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and so if I scroll up and down, yeah, that's, that's working nicely, look. As expected, really. So, hot UK deals. Yeah, very nice performance on Firefox. And then close tabs. So really nice performance, really nice looking desktop. Uh, I always liked Lubuntu when I first tried it. It always just had a really nice look to it. I like the way that it's all structured. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's very much like using Windows 10. Uh, and, uh, and I like that part of it. Uh, I like the apps that come in it. I like the App Store. Uh, it's uh, it's very snappy, it's very good performance. There's a lot to like about Lubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4. So, 
Uh, definitely another great operating system using Desktopify. Uh, Wimpy's doing some great work with these. Uh, it's I couldn't really find anything wrong with this. Everything's working very well. It's uh, it looks really nice. Uh, everything about Lubuntu is uh, is class really. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Just a last little note, uh, with all the polish and all the uh, very nice aesthetics with Lubuntu, as you can see here, this is really nice on the lock screen. When you log back in, this is a really strange looking screen. And I don't know if it's because it's based on a really old version of Ubuntu or something. Because when you look at the fonts, and especially when you put the password in, uh, the stars and things uh, just tend to look really, really dated. But I guess it's just, there must be some sort of... Uh, reason that it uses this sort of theme uh, rather than going in with all the rest. I quite like it. Anyway, 